What's going on, y'all? Hold on. My mic is low as hell for some reason. What the hell? This shit sound like it ain't got no sound. Let me try to turn up that game. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Okay, yeah. Even if I'm far, you can now hear me. That's how I like it to be. I want you to be able to hear me. Um, Man, bro. I don't be knowing, like... This is the thing when you um multi-streaming. I can't tell if it's even fully working. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm I'm online on all the sites first. Let's check Trovo. I'm gonna check all these sites and then I'm gonna let y'all know what's going on. Cuz I'm dealing with an issue right now and um I'm tired right now, bro. I'm tired of dealing with this issue. Let me mute that. I'm tired of dealing with this issue. I'm I'm like literally at a point where um, it's discouraging. It's, it's making me not want to, you know, really be doing this live stream stuff like that because every single time I'm trying to get on and do my thing, it's always an issue. It's irritating. Hold on one second. Let me. I'm just checking right now to make sure I'm live, y'all. That's all I'm doing. Um, 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 um. Let me check Twitch. I'm still able to, all right, hold on. Just give me one second. Yes, sir, to be Hans. Um, is we in the game? Boom, 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 boom. Okay. I'm live on that thing. Hold on. Let me go to my page. Click on that video. Okay, cool, y'all. So. All right, so I'm having this issue right now, and uh, man, it's becoming like uh, super irritating, and it's to the point where like uh, I don't feel like I can't take it no more. Like at first, like I'm being nice about it, but now I feel like I can't take it anymore. Every single time I get on, um, I get on like my stream or whatever, like uh, it's like they disabled all of my um my features to where I could like play music and do all the, the all the extra shit, but for some reason like I can't get on, bro. Like it's irritating. It's like um, no matter what I do, it's just not working. I, I've contacted Streamlabs about this issue. I told them straight up, like, listen, um, every time I try to get on live or whatnot, it's not fully working. Like all my features isn't working. It's still letting me multi-stream. But like uh my my stream ain't ain't working like all my features like my music and all that other type of stuff so uh I sent them tickets this is the second ticket I done sent and I'm not playing like if if I don't get a response after this one I'm going to a different platform I'm not about to beg beg nobody to be on a platform so it's like yo I'm coming in I'm trying to pay you every time I try to pay it just keeps saying my subscription is already active when my subscription been over since the 18th and uh they still let me multi-stream but they not letting giving me all the features I'm trying to get all the features but they playing games so i'm a look listen if i don't get a response by tomorrow night i'm out i'm about to delete this whole thing i'm not playing with these stream labs people i don't know who they think i am but i'm not playing all right so uh if you watching this video as you can see we're doing another exercise Today, um, we decided to go random. Um, today we're working on um, <laughs> on the uh, the two women on Bay Bay's Kids. If you've seen the show Bay Bay's Kids, I mean, excuse me, not the show, the movie Bay Bay's Kids, uh, back in the '90s, you already know who these two women are. There's no need for me to explain. But to my people who are not of my culture, who probably have never seen this, um, the main character uh, who. Uh, I can't remember his name. What was this comedian name? I want to say his name was Robin Harris. Uh, the main character um, who was based on Robin Harris, the comedian, if I'm not mistaken. This this woman right here to the left, <laughs> the light skin one with that, <laughs> with I don't know what the hell she got on her head with a toupee. This was supposed to be, I guess, his ex or whatnot. And uh, she was coming to confront him when he was with his new girl. And uh, I always thought this part was funny to me because... Um, this part is so classic, just the way that they look. 
like uh you know a long time ago like the way women's makeup used to be in the 90s and the hairstyles and all that I always thought that was um that was funny so what we're going to do today we're going to be working with the same tools as we always use which is the um the pen tool and the curvature tool and we're going to go ahead and get started so first thing you want to do is drag your picture in here, double click uh, your line, uh, excuse me, your layer one. Once you double click it, the template menu will open. All you have to do is click on template, click the check mark right next to it, press OK, and your image should look like this to where it looks a little bit more transparent and lighter. Go to the bottom of the screen, click on the plus, the plus symbol right here that to start a new, uh, excuse me, to create a new layer. Once you create a new layer, then that will be a layer that we are now going to be drawing on. Once we're drawn on this layer, we're going to be using these two tools, the pen tool and the curvature tool. I don't feel like I'll be doing like a lot of explaining today. As most people who watch me, they have already previous, previously seen my videos. Sometimes I just like to do a little explainer for the people who haven't ever seen these videos. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and get started. I appreciate everybody who is uh, coming in. I know sometimes it takes a little time for people to come in, but until then, I'm about to go ahead and just get started. So let's go ahead. Let's get Shorty's head right here. Let's come around. If you notice, as uh, with the curvature tool, I'm just coming around, switching to the pen tool to get those lines and anchor points, and using the curvature tool to bend those lines. Now you can tell by this cartoon they didn't use highlights and shadows. Of course, back in those those times they used to use um, animation cells for cartoons, and that's the main reason why cartoons used to look the way they look and function the way they they function. Yo, this light skin woman, man, yeah. <laughs> This hair, <laughs> this hairstyle she have on her head is just crazy. I'm gonna start on her first. <laughs> her hairstyle is just man. <laughs> yeah, they was bogus for this. Like I always wonder, like, yo, did they actually know a woman whose hair was like this? Like, who who would do this? It's like a part of me that was like, I hope there was a black person that was um that was like uh you know in the studio drawing this cartoon. Cause like yo, if you if you wasn't black and you made a black woman look like this, yo, you racist. Let's keep it real. <laughs> you racist, man. Come on, son. Why you, why why is this woman's hair like this, man? This woman's hair look crazy. <laughs> yo, for real. <laughs> Who is that? Is that Big Mando? Yo, shout out to Big Mando. I ain't seen Big Mando in a minute. He said, right, they bogus. <laughs> yo, for real, like, yo, they got her hair looking crazy. Yo, if you, like, really, like, look at her hair, like, what was they thinking when they did this? They was like, we about to clown. We about to clown this bitch. Like, let's make her hair look cr as crazy as possible. Now, um, what you want to do is anytime you're working on um, a design like this, you want to be... <laughs> overshooting <laughs> you want to be overshooting your, your your lines and your line work to um just to make sure uh, you get it as clean as possible to so anybody that's probably wondering why the lines are um are being overlapped like that that is for a reason uh whenever you use an illustrator especially for uh, my beginners who plan on um starting their journey you want to make sure um you overshoot these lines right before you start getting rid of these lines you know what I'm saying? That's how you're going to get that very clean look that you see in the, uh, on the internet. But then again, you could do what you want to do. I'm just showing you a method that I use in order to um, get those clean lines. Now, um, uh, in the 90s, when they used to create characters, like I told y'all, a lot of times when they used to create these characters, it wasn't black people making these characters. And that's the reason why sometimes these characters used to look ridiculous. Like a lot of times they used to have extreme lips, extreme, uh, you know, extreme teeth, super big ass noses and stuff like that. There wasn't black people actually creating a lot of these designs. And um, I encourage anybody who isn't black, if you are going to be creating uh, 
you know, characters of black people and whatnot, you want to try to keep it respectful and don't make things look too ridiculous. I don't care if you think black people actually look like that. You that that's the main reason why I would honestly recommend just to have a, a black person's second opinion to be like, okay, that's cool. That doesn't look uh, disrespectful because sometimes like stuff like this um, lo looks crazy. It looks disrespectful, and a lot of times when you're working on these type of designs, you don't want to be um, you know putting together something that could be disrespecting the culture nowadays. And that's the main reason why sometimes you'll, you'll see a cartoon that's dope and it just disappear. It's only because a lot of times, you know, they might have did something dis disrespectful to a culture and whatever. And that's how a lot of times this jump be disappearing. So as you can see, we just going through just with that pen tool and with that curvature tool building these shapes. Now, to build a circle like this, so just in case you can't build a circle with your um, pen tool or curvature tool, what I want you to do is right under your pen tool, there's a shape tool. Right click that shape tool and choose whichever shape you want to choose. I'm going to choose ellipse tool, which that's the circle. And if you see like a little circle or whatever, like right here, you see she has a mole right there. All you have to do is just click and drag. That's how you get a little circle right there. We're going to do that for the earring. The earring is just a little oval. So drag it just like that. Boom. That's how you get those shapes. I think this is supposed to be like a, another part of our earring. Yeah, this is. So boom, 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 boom. You make a triangle. Then what you do is use your curvature tool. Bend that jump just like that. And then add, a, add another anchor point right next to this. This uh, sharp anchor point. Click on the sharp anchor point. Delete that. And that's how you make a shape in that type of manner. When, I know it may be hard just watching me do this and moving this fast, but like uh, once you actually get yourself used to the program, you'll start figuring out a lot of these things on your own. Like uh, it's hard when you first start out, like I always tell people, but it's like riding a bike. Like once you got it, you got it. It's just hard when you first start. But trust me, you can, anybody could do this. Um, okay, they made our nose simple. They just made it three little points right there. So you make three anchor points. Anchor points you always want to make on all of the sharp parts of the design. Then grab your curvature tool and just grab the middle of the line like that and just drag it. Boom. Boom. You want to remember you want to you want to know all of your hot keys and all of your shortcuts when it comes down to um, creating these designs. The more that you know your hot keys and your anchor points, that's going to actually help you to work faster when it comes to these type of projects. You know, you want the one the main thing you want to uh, you want to do is when you're working on these type of projects is all about speed. And uh, a lot of times people will pay you based off that that like people like to pay designers more if they know that you can get this shit knocked out ASAP. You know what I'm saying? Like I was just on Upwork earlier. And, and even a lot of uh, customers on Upwork, you know, they'll put the time frame like, yo, uh, you know, however long it's going to take. But if anything, they prefer for you to get this done immediately. So trust me, if you want to have more value within the, the designs you create, you want to make sure you move in as fast as possible. And the way you move faster is by knowing and understanding these shortcuts. Now you see in the, in, in the inside of her eye, you see those circles. So let's, to get a perfect circle, you hold shift when you grab your, um, excuse me, your, uh, I'm, I, like I'll be forgetting this shit. <laughs> Once you grab your shape tool, right click your shape tool, choose that uh, ellipse tool, which is the circle, hold shift, and then drag out a circle. That's how you get a perfect circle when it comes down to that. Make sure y'all ain't saying nothing. Shout out to Big Mind though. I ain't talked to him in a minute. I used to do a bunch of designs for him. Um, boom, 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 boom. Yo, shout out to my nigga Cookies. I see you. I see you. I don't know who that other person is watching, but yo, shout out to them. Shout out to everybody on YouTube. Shout out to everybody on Twitch. Shout out to my people of B Hands. I usually can't see no names on Behance, but yo, shout out to all the people on Behance who watch the stream, who watch the stream consistently ever since I've been on there. 
Behance, if you, if you are an artist, Behance is a very good platform to go to if you're trying to, you know, get started or whatever uh, in this art world. I'm new to streaming. I've only been streaming for what? Like um, since December 20-something. So I ain't been streaming that long for the people who watching. I ain't been streaming that long. I'm still new. I'm not new to streaming, but I'm new to streaming on multiple platforms like the way I'm streaming right now. <laughs> All right, let's do the other eye. I want to make sure I get her clean. I don't see too many clean images of these two women on the Internet. So I thought this would be interesting. Just to knock this out real quick. I'm not going to do the full bodies of them. I'm just going to do the... Um, the faces. I'm not going to put that, that much time into it. Okay. Let's get those outlines. Always add those anchor points. Add as many anchor points as possible to where we got this design nice and clean. Okay, I think that's it as far as the details of her face. Let's get that neck. Remember, anytime you're working on a female character, you want to make her neck nice and smooth and flat, not too thick. When you're working on a male character, especially when you're working on a masculine man, you want the neck to be a little bit thicker and the shoulders to kind of uh, connect a little bit stronger. It's not like that for female characters. Female characters, you want their neck to be nice and slim, unless you're uh, designing a BBW. You want the neck to be nice and slim, and you want the shoulders to um, to be nice and slim too. Now, if you're making a big girl, that's a <laughs> that's a whole another story. Keeping those lines nice and thin like the original. Okay, let's do the bra string. Just come around. Now, if you're doing this correctly, it shouldn't even really take you that long. Just like that. Boom. Man, bro, I'm so frustrated with Streamlabs right now. I can't even, I can't play the music. I can't properly see my site. Like, man. I really didn't even want to get on stream today because I just like, man, they playing with me. I feel like these people trying me. I don't even know why. I don't even see no other streamers going through this. They're going crazy. I'm scared to play music because I know if I play music, that's going to mess up my YouTube. Oh, uh, yeah. To all the people who are playing on streaming... And getting on YouTube and using that as a platform. I'm going to tell y'all right now. They're updating the algorithm. I, I know this from one of my friends. You know, I got a couple homies that's big big name YouTubers. That I'm not going to mention their names and put them out there. But they was telling me. They was like, listen, YouTube is changing. They already been like notifying a lot of the uh, larger names in YouTube. So like if, uh, one thing they're going to be changing. If you the type of person who do like a lot of cussing. They de they gonna demonetize you like super hard. So like if you be cussing in all your videos and all of that, I'm just letting you know right now, you got a big surprise coming. They said if you cuss within the first 15 seconds of your video, they gonna they're gonna start um like you know uh, uh uh working to take people's channels down that's doing too much cussing. I think a lot of that is because they're trying to make their platform like super duper kid friendly. Because, like, this YouTube Kids app, like, I guess they probably, they may be possibly feeling like a lot of kids ain't using YouTube Kids. So, I think they're, like, really trying to fight to clean up YouTube. 
and I have mixed feelings about that. It's like YouTube, I feel like it should be like a free speech thing. And, you know, the things for kids should be separate. But at the same time as they platform, if they want to make it safe for everybody, you know, they want to cut down on the cussing. You know, it is what it is. I just feel like it should be it. You shouldn't de uh, demonetize people for that. But, you know, it is what it is, man. I used to be monetized for the people who don't know. I used to be monetized. You know, I used to get paid for my content. I wasn't getting paid a lot, <laughs> but I was getting paid for my content. Um, my main channel that had all my music videos and all that on it. I was receiving like every time I, I would check like every month, it would, it would be like some a couple of dollars in there um, just from like different videos I had over time. And it'd just be like every time I check it, be like twenty dollars. $30, uh, you know, just, that's all it was. Like, it wasn't like a lot of money, but I was getting monetized. I was getting money on there. And, uh, man, you know, my channel got took down, so uh, I don't get that no more. But at the same time, if I want to get back to that point, I got to calm down with this cussing. So I'm trying not to cuss. Unless somebody try me. Somebody try me. We go ahead and get the hell demonetized off this damn thing. But, you know, if anything, I'm trying to calm down. Okay, we almost done with this lady, man. Let's go ahead and get all these detail lines in there. Really, what you can do to get these detail lines, just right-click your shape tool, choose line segment tool when it's just a little line like this, and just drag out the line just like that. Boom. Boom. It's another little line. Boom. And then what you want to do to bend those lines, just grab that curvature tool, just like that, and then grab the middle of the line. And then just drag it like that. Go to the next one, click it, drag it just like that. Click it. This one uh need to be dragged over just a little bit. Yeah, man, YouTube is coming down hard on people. I still can't believe my YouTube channel got, got took down, bro. Damn, bro. I had all of those followers, all of those views, all of that just gone. Crazy, bro. Okay, so we have her done. Matter of fact, let me get get where her stomach is. <laughs> what do they call What do women call this? A crop top? Yo, this bit look crazy, yo. All right, so we got her done. Let me inspect these lines. Yeah, I think we good. Okay, let's get to the big girl. She look crazy, too. Yeah, this woman look crazy, too. Let me get her right. I'm thinking about damn near like doing a remake of this and cleaning them up. I think that'd be interesting to do. I should do I should do like them again. I should redraw them. I think that'd be cool to do. Like redraw them and redraw them in a way to where they look a lot better. Cause like, yo, whoever made this cartoon, they got them looking crazy. I think that was the intention, but god damn. They like look like um They look like I'm trying to use the nice word. They look like street workers. You know what I'm saying? They look like street workers. Click that. Boom. Boom. Motion detected in the front yard. Let's see who's walking past my door. Oh, just some people. There's some people walking past on the streets. As you know, I have a camera system all around my house. If you even turn your head and look at my house, it would tell me. When you live in these bad neighborhoods, you got to have it like that. 
I would recommend that for everybody. Like for everybody who lives in a bad neighborhood or whatnot, keep you some cameras everywhere. And uh, believe it or not, keep you some um, some tools of protection around. We'll say that. Keep you some tools of protection around you because in these bad neighborhoods, these, um, I'm trying to use safe words. I'm trying to clean up my act on YouTube. These uh, street walkers, these uh, ladies of the night, just these individuals that walk through my neighborhood who don't got their mind right. You want to be very careful around these people. I've seen a lot in these bad neighborhoods, and I just know that uh, it ain't really that safe to where you need to be, you know, not having no type of alarm system or uh, some personal protection uh, surrounded around yourself because it can get very treacherous around here and you never just never know what people are on you know what I'm saying and uh, I know some people probably don't um, don't want to do that some of y'all like man I'm not I'm not uh, you know about to be around here with no weapons nothing like that but I'm letting you know right now you got to keep something on you because people will try you Especially when you're young, black, you living in these neighborhoods. People will try you, man. And people don't be thinking I get tried because uh, because of how big I am, you know. I mean, to the people who, who do know know about me, know of me, y'all do know I am a bigger guy. I'm 6'5". Well, 6'4", but 6'5", when I got shoes on. So I just say 6'5". But, um, you know, people will try you. You know, a little junkie dude going to walk up to me and going to say to me, uh, can you give me a ride to work? I'm like, what? Give you a ride to work? I'm th I'm thinking I'm hearing things like, give you a ride to work. I looked that boy dead in his eye. I said, listen to me, dog. I'll never give you a ride to work. Don't ever ask me something like that. What type of goofy ass question is that? These people out here is crazy, y'all. To the people who are watching this video, I live in South Bend, Indiana. I know what you're saying to yourself. South Bend, Indiana. What? South Bend, Indiana ain't that bad. Well, that's because you ain't been to the black part. <laughs> you probably ain't been to the west side. I'm guessing that. You probably ain't been to the east side. You probably ain't been to the lake side. South Bend is a very, very, very bipolar place. I know some people who lived in South Bend their entire life and never had a problem. I know some people who've lived in South Bend who literally can't go a day without a problem. It's just it's just a very bipolar city. For the people who um who've never been to South Bend, you ever think about visiting. South Bend is a very colorful place. It's like um, sometimes, like, I think from the outside looking in, people, they think this is a college town. You know, oh, that's a college town, man. Notre Dame. You have to understand, Notre Dame is only on one one side of town. And Notre Dame is almost like they have their own world. South Bend is um, it's just different. It's a lot different than, I think, what people think. I've I seen a video of some... Uh, of some um some Caucasian guys, some Caucasian brothers. And they were um saying some things that were just very laughable. They were talking about all of these like gangs and stuff in South Bend. I I knew that they either weren't from South Bend or they just had they just was super uninformed. South Bend isn't really um super ganged out, right? It is gangs out here, right? But it isn't like a you know, it isn't like a structured the way that Chicago gangs are. It's really like um, it's really functions on like sides of town. I'm, I'm telling you from experience. I'm not telling you from some shit I don't know. I'm telling you from experience of what I've known growing up out here my entire life. And um, people from these different sides of town are territorial. It's weird. It's like um, we have like this weird beef in South Bend where a person will try to confront you. Excuse me. 
a person will try to come confront you over from being from a certain side of town. You know, I'm in a barber shop. You know, I'm you know, I'm I'm 31 years old, mind you. And a dude says to me, um, uh, yo, yo, ain't you from the lake or something? I said, listen to me, cuz. I grew up very poor. Like, I, I don't claim a side of town, especially not no side of town from if I don't own anything. So, like, uh, you even if you may have seen me lift over there, I'm not claiming it. I don't I don't play. I don't even play that type of game. Like, I get money with everybody. Ain't no claiming nothing with me. The only thing I'm claiming is the money side. <laughs> That's the only side I'm claiming. But, nah, he asked me in a very um, serious type of manner. And I made sure I addressed that straight up like, nah, bro. Like, uh, you may have seen me over there. You may see me kick it with people from over there. But I'm not uh, claiming no side. Ain't no sides to be claimed with J-Damage. So I just want to make that clear. But South Bend is a place where people do that. You know, you may be at one of the gas stations. You know what I mean? You may be at one of the gas stations out here and think everything is cool. Then next thing you know, you're getting confronted by somebody by the side of town or some weird shit like that. Or somebody just trying to rob you. Oh, yeah, people get robbed in South Bend. Yeah, I bet you didn't know that. You would be surprised how bad South Bend has gotten over the years. I've, I've watched this city get worse over time. And um, I would just recommend anybody that's living out here. If you are, if you do plan on living in South Bend, try to live you in an area where it's not, you know, too dangerous where there's not too much lingering danger around where you at. That was a big mistake that I made. You know, um, choosing to live in these areas, thinking everything is cool. Like, man, you know, I ain't involved in nothing. You know, you know that rumor when you live in a in a certain place. You're like, man, as long as you don't, you don't talk to nobody, you mind your business, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Oh, not over here. <laughs> over here, they shooting up houses. So even if you mind your business... Your house can still get shot up. Not that you're the intended target, but uh, your crib can still get shot up. You can still get it too. So that's why right now I'm so focused on doing whatever I can do to get me and my kids the hell away from these ignorant ass people. And that's just the reality. And um, if I do plan on getting anything in South Bend moving forward, it's going to be something in a very nice, probably possibly gated community. And um, I just think that would be best for somebody like me. So because I don't I don't do too well with confrontation. That's the main reason why I avoid it so much. Because in South Bend, a person, like, it's hard to avoid confrontation in South Bend. And this is why I feel like South Bend is damn near worse than bigger cities. It's hard to avoid confrontation because we live in such a small town that you can get into somebody. You can get, get excuse me, get into it with somebody and you'll run into it. You'll run into them again. You know, it, it's, it's not like these bigger cities because you, you live in Chicago. You have some ops, you know. Uh, a little ways from you and you'll mess around and never run into them in your stores or whatever, because these stores is a little bit far from each other. But if, if you lived in Chicago, you already know most people who live in Chicago, most of the people they beef with don't live that far from them. But I'm just making an example. When you live in a bigger city, you don't really run into your enemies like that, but not in South Bend, <laughs> South Bend, you'll be beefing with somebody. Next thing you know, you somewhere, you somewhere at Kroger's, <laughs> you know, buying some food or something. Next thing you know, here, here come an enemy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we, we frequent most, most of the same places. And that's the main reason why I always try to encourage stop the violence in South Bend because we too close to each other. It's too dangerous. We too close to each other and we can run into our enemies very easily. So if anything, if you are in the streets in South Bend, you involved in stuff, I encourage anybody, you know, change your life, man. Go get you something to do. Go get some money. 
get some women and go enjoy yourself man don't spend your whole life out here beefing and just doing dumb ignorant shit for real for real this ain't Jay Damage speaking to you right now this is James Van speaking find you something to do that ain't got that ain't got nothing to do with too much drama man I feel like I, I've lived that part of my life and now I'm done with that part of, part of my life I don't I don't be having the energy to be out here arguing and beefing with people, bro. I'm just too old for that. I'm too mature. You approach me with the dumb shit. I'm going to have to put a hot one in you. I'm just going to keep it real. I'm I'm just not at that point to be in the middle of the streets fighting with somebody. I'm just too old for that. Even though probably 90% of the people I fight, I'll probably beat the, you know, I'll probably do whatever. But that's not me no more. Yo, shout out to everybody who is still watching on uh, Behance and Trovo. I appreciate the people that still hold on. Lord Jesus. Okay, I'm hearing voices outside my door. Hold on. Check my cameras. I don't like that shit. Okay, I'm just hearing things. I don't see nobody outside. Let's get this line work out the way. As you see right now, I'm just using the curvature tool. Making those curves on the straw. And then every time you make a curve line like that, grab your selection tool and click off of it once you're done. Okay, get our fingers, because our fingers and all that is on the cup. Boom. All right, right click your shape tool, grab your line. Boom, just like that. I feel like I did not do a good job on this cup. Um, let me fix that. I want this cup to be a little bit more cleaner. Just get like that, curvature tool. Just curve that up the right way. It still don't look right to me. But I'm going to try to make it work, though. Let's get that bent over just a little bit better. Just like that. Remember, anytime you're working on a project like this, you want to make as many anchor points as you have to make. And just try to get it nice and clean. Let's try to get this nice and clean. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. I think we got them done. Oh, yeah. Let me get this. This weird. Both of them got these weird tops. I don't think, of, I don't think I've ever in life seen a black woman wear a top like this. This is very strange top. I don't think I've ever seen this before. I don't know. Y'all can educate me. Maybe this was like a thing in the 90s. But I've never like legit seen a black woman wear a top that looks like this. Okay. So let's adjust these lines. Once you have these, line, these lines like fully done like this. What you want to do is go through and, and make sure like uh, a lot of your outer edges are a little bit thicker than your inner edges. Most cartoonists, this is the way that they uh, follow a lot of these cartoon designs. We're not going to make the outer edges too thick. We just want them just to be a little bit more thicker than the other lines. I mean the inner lines. Let's go ahead and keep it moving. 
My kids are very loud when I just told them to go to bed. I don't like that shit. Let's get this lips and nose. Let's thicken that up a little bit. Let's get the outer edges of the eyes. Let's get that right. Boom. Now you want to take your time and get these details correct. I would recommend this for anybody that's working on, you know, these sort of designs. Take your time and get your stuff right, man. Especially if you're working for a customer. You know, take your time and get this right, man. Don't be slacking on that, man. You know? You get that straw in that top. Boom, just like that. Take that up a tiny bit. All right, let's get <laughs> let's get Shorty with the toupee. Let's get her right. Like I said, I'm thinking about redrawing them. I think that would be a dope idea to redraw them and make them look a little bit nicer. Cause everybody X ain't ugly. I don't I don't like that whole thing like. Everybody X ain't all ugly and raggedy looking. Okay. Okay, we got him. I think we got him. I don't see no details missing. From what I'm seeing, I think we got them. We not gonna put that background in there. I don't find it that serious. But I think we got them overall. Now, you're going to know you did this right is when you look at it and it looks like it, when you draw on top, you drew on top of it, it looks very clean. It almost looks like it's invisible. You know what I'm saying? Let's do the outer edges of her ear. Okay, I think we good. No, 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 no. Nope. Make sure, don't be like me. Make sure you zoom all the way in and check. You want to make sure you zoom all the way in and check. If you're on a MacBook like I am, just uh, you pinch the zoom. You pinch the zoom all the way in like that. Pinch the zoom all the way in and pinch the zoom all the way out. Now, if you're on a, a, a Windows, you know, PC or whatnot, you want to be, um, excuse me, um, using your mouse and using the, um, what, what do they call that, a, a ball in the mouse? Use the ball in the mouse. I don't use Windows computers, so I don't know. I know how to use them, but I just don't be wanting them. The motherfuckers be getting, um, uh, what you call that? <laughs> if y'all use um, them Windows computers, them must be getting, uh, uh, what's the names? Them must be getting viruses. Man, I ain't never had a virus in my life. Never had a virus on my computers. That's some Windows shit. Okay, I'm just doing, I'm just being extra right now, getting extra details before I go to the next step. I hate to go to the next step knowing that I forgot stuff. I just want to be sure. She ain't got no cleavage either. I might add a little something. Let me add a little something. Add a little something for, uh, for baby girl. Give her a little something. <laughs> what she say on, uh... On Norbit. Most girls have a little something, 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 something. You, you just skin and bones, bones and skin. I want to give her something. Just make it a little bit. We want her to look like she's skinny. Okay. Let's make that line a little bit thicker. Boom. Okay. Let's give her a little something. Okay. Now we're going to go to the next step. Let me uh, refresh. I'm seeing that my uh, my Trovo is like working and then not working. Yo, shout out to Jay Nardo. Uh, to Jay Nardo 12. That says Match Rival. I appreciate you. Shout out to uh, everybody on YouTube. I can't see your names, but shout out to you. Shout out to everybody on Twitch. Uh, shout out to my people on Behance. I appreciate my Behance watches. 
Shout out to my people on um, on uh, Facebook. I appreciate you. I see LeWoyne just came in here showing that love. I appreciate you com coming in and showing love to the game. I know sometimes it can be a little boring, you know, sitting down watching me do this whole thing. But I know y'all be wanting to see the end result. Like I always tell you, you do not have to watch this entire video. I mean, this entire live stream. What you can always do is once I get done, you could always, you know, find some time out your day. Especially if you're trying to watch this, this tutorial to learn something. You can uh, take some time out your day and just watch me once you have some time. Because these, these videos are a little bit long. A lot of times when I'm uh, working on these, it takes me about a good hour, an hour and some change, something like that. We already done been on for, I believe, 45 minutes. So it takes some time sometimes. But if you can stomach sitting here this entire time, I appreciate you. You could be anywhere in the world right now, but you then bring your ass over here with me. So I appreciate you. Okay, once you get all of your line work done, just like how you see right here, we're going to go ahead and go to the next step. If you have any questions, make sure you write it in. But we continue it. Select this entire thing with the selection tool just like that. Go to the top of your screen, click on object, then click on group. Boom. Once you click on group, it say who couldn't enjoy watching you draw? <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Shout out to Cage Akuma TTV, always coming in and showing love through that Trovo. I appreciate everybody who watches me and comes in on Trovo and shows that love. Okay, so what did I say? I said object and then group. So then after object and group, what I want you to do is click on object and scroll down to expand. Click on expand. Once, once you click on expand, the menu pops up. Uh, just click OK. Boom. So as you click OK, you have now turned those line, the line work that you did, you have turned those lines into shapes once you hit expand. So let me uh, try to color those in and make sure those are black. Make sure they're not gray. Okay, so what you want to do now is go on the right side of your right side toolbar and click on the Pathfinder button. If you do not see the Pathfinder button, don't worry. What I want you to do is uh, go to the top of the screen, click on Window, and scroll down to the P's. So as soon as you see Pathfinder, it should be in the P's. It's right under Navigator. If you don't see it, what I want you to do is, is uh, restart uh, Illustrator and then see if you see it. As soon as you have the Pathfinder button open, what I want you to do is click Divide. Boom. Go ahead and click that divide button. It's going to look like nothing happened, but don't worry. Something did happen. You have now divided all of your lines that you converted into shapes. And I'm going to show you. Click on your white selection tool, not your black selection tool, the white one. If you hover your mouse over it, it says direct selection tool. Now let's go ahead and start getting rid of all those access lines that we don't need. So you see this line right here? Click on that and just keep hitting delete till it's gone. Just like that. Line, he deletes it, it's gone. Just keep doing that. We just getting let rid of all those lines that we don't need because we want our project to look nice and clean and finished. Now you could, this is just one of the methods of, of getting rid of these lines. Another way you can do it is hold shift. You see how I'm holding the shift button and I'm just clicking on those lines that I don't need. Make sure you're holding shift the entire time that you're doing this. As you click in these lines, let's zoom in, get right there on that eye. Let's zoom in, get that line right there. You can do this for however many lines you want to do. You just zoom in, start clicking those lines, and make sure you hold and shift. Do not let go of shift when you're doing this, right? So once you have all the lines that you feel like that you want to have selected, what I want you to do is let go of shift and then just keep hitting delete until everything is gone. Just like this. You see that? Sorry for all that noise, y'all. That's my laptop shaking on my on the uh, laptop fan. But yeah, that's how you get rid of all those access lines. So what we're doing now, we're just getting rid of all those lines. Now, understand, you can skip this step if you do feel comfortable after using Illustrator uh, for a while, you do not have to overlap your lines. This is just a, a, a method that I've teach that I teach with is because this method will help you get those lines as clean as possible when you're working on your project. So let's go ahead and let's get rid of all these access lines. You know, I'm thinking about doing an anime project 
I don't like drawing anime because it's very time consuming. But like uh, sometimes I want to show people because uh, I know a lot of people who draw or want to do illustrator. A lot of times they want to do anime. And I'm not a, I'm not against that. I'm not no super fan of anime or anything like that. But uh, I'm just letting you know, anime, you can actually work. The, you can work anime with the same method. I'm just letting you know that it's way more time consuming. And I wouldn't recommend anime for beginners. If you're a beginner, start trying other things first before you you uh, jump straight into anime. Now, anime is cool. Don't get it twisted. I ain't player hating no anime. I'm just saying when it comes down to um, drawing in these programs. It says anime and oriental style. Yes, Akuma TTTV. Um, yes, uh, anime. Just anything of uh, a lot of times the the Asian the Asian drawing styles. Um, a lot of those styles are a lot more detailed. You know, far as the line work, the sh the shadows, the highlights, the the extra white edges that they add. On a lot of those, you know, you wanna you wanna make sure you uh. You take your time and get those right. And please, to all all the women that I deal with, please do not call me when I'm when I'm on live. I would would appreciate if you don't do that. I don't know if you're trying to get on my live or something and announce yourself. I'm not out here hiding you. I just I just don't want that type of energy on my life. Look, look at this, y'all. I don't want this type of energy when I'm on my live, yo. I do not want to be on the phone doing all that talking. Now, once I get on off live, I'll call her back. But I don't like doing that. Okay, now this is something I want to show y'all. Just in case this is an issue when you're making this type of design. Every blue moon. This doesn't happen all the time. Especially if you use your... your um custom brushes you won't have this issue but sometimes we'll have lines that merge like this now whenever you have a line that merges like this it's always one or two in almost every project this is just an issue that illustrator has what i want you to do is uh select that line with the uh, white selection tool just like that you see the two ways you can do this you could either you grab your eraser tool and just delete it just like that that's a simple way to do it or if you want to get surgical what you can do is grab your um your curvature tool and uh, as soon as you click your curvature tool, you'll start seeing these dots. Those are anchor points. Just click on each anchor point and delete it. Just click, delete, click, delete, click, delete, click, delete. That's the clean way to do it. So that's how you get rid of those lines. Just in case that's an issue that any of y'all happen to run into. I've seen this happen to people. They like, Jay, uh, why did this keep happening to me? I don't know how to stop it. Don't worry about it. Those are I just showed you two different strategies how to how to get rid of that. Now back to anime. Now uh, I like anime as far as um, only certain things, but I'm not animated out. I'm not um, I'm not like privy to all the shows. When I was a kid, you see, I always say people from my generation who grew, who grew up in the '90s. If you like anime, you like really like anime. Because when I was a kid, there was no way you could keep up with that. Like, you have to think about it. We didn't have the internet. Like, you couldn't watch all those shows. Like, so, um, basically, and this is the main reason why I, I stopped liking Dragon Ball Z when I was a kid. I couldn't keep up with it. You know, um, one day I would watch an episode. I come back to watch the episode. It's a whole different episode. I'm talking about like it almost seemed like every time I was watching Dragon Ball Z on TV, it was never in order. The episodes was always so random. Like I, I, every, I would watch it sometimes and I wouldn't know where, what the hell was going on anymore because every time I would turn the show on, it would be like a whole like different joint. So like it was hard to keep up with TV back in those days. Anybody who's around my age, y'all know what I'm talking about. A long time ago, it was hard to keep up with TV shows. Like you had to really like you had to have like a <laughs> see I'm going real old school right now you had to have like a some type of like a cable or whatever that could like save your stuff so you can go back and watch it a lot of times or you would have to literally you know hurry up and get home to like watch your favorite TV show just to stay on schedule type shit like that's how like TV used to be when I was younger like if you like when you was watching TV you had to be on schedule to watch certain shows. Just like how nowadays people be watching shows like 
empire, power, and things like that. See, all of that stuff is internet accessible. Like, if you want to watch that TV show, you could just go on the internet and just find all the episodes and watch everything in order. It wasn't like that back in the day. If you wanted to watch something, you had to really go home, sit down at the TV, and watch that joint. And when it went off, it was off. You didn't see this show no more. You know, you may hear about it from some people at work or some, but like, you know, there, there you was you wasn't seeing it no more. And that's the main reason why people value TV so much back in those days, because it was an experience. It was something that you've seen. It came and went. It came and went. It happened. And then when it was gone, it was gone. It was crazy. And that was the main reason why I think I never really got into anime, because I just couldn't keep up. I couldn't keep up with it. And I'm just not one of them dudes that like uh, that's really with all that cosplay and all that type of stuff. But I ain't knocking nobody that's in it. If you in it, you want to do all that cosplay and all that type of joint, I ain't, I ain't judging you. I'm just letting you know I'm from that generation where all of that started. And I'm not, I wasn't feeling that, like how I couldn't keep up with everything. So I, I, I stopped being into it. Okay, as you can see, we have both of these lovely ladies. If you notice, I kept everything close to the original. The only thing that I changed was I made the outlines a little bit thicker, and I gave a baby girl a little bit of boobies. That's it. You can get too crazy. I just gave her a little bit of chest because she was a little little flat-chested wanch. You know what I'm saying? Look at her. She ain't had a little nothing. I gave her a little something. Just a little something. All right? Not, nothing too crazy to where you could be like, damn, Jay, you getting freaky. I ain't doing nothing too freaky and weird. I just wanted to, you know, give her a little something. All right, so once you get... To this point where you got all your access lines gone. The way that you know you have that you did done this step right is you want to bring back your layer under it. And when you look at it, it should look like literally like the original. When you zoom in, everything should be on point. So now we're ready to go to the next step. Let, let's check. Make sure ain't nobody said nothing. Yo, shout out to David Hoodcat Lomax. Appreciate you. Appreciate you coming in, hitting like and showing love to the game. Shout out to um, all of my people on Behance. Uh, I see Tamika Grooms is, is live streaming now. Shout out to her. I'll be watching her stuff. Shout out to everybody on, um, excuse me, on uh, Twitch. I can't see those names. Shout out to everybody on YouTube. I can't see your names, but shout out to you. And uh, shout out to um, all of my people on Trovo who are currently watching me. I appreciate you. All right, well, let's go to the next step, y'all. I don't see no questions, so we good. Select this entire thing. Boom, select that entire thing just like that, right? What I want you to do now is go to the top of the screen and click on Object. If, you, if you're watching me on live stream, you won't see these menus. But if you are following me on Illustrator, then you'll see everything that I'm saying right now. Go to the top of the screen, click object, and then scroll down to live paint. As soon as you get to live paint, click on make. Boom. It's going to look like nothing happened, but don't worry. You have now prepared your project to be painted in. So one of the first things that I always do is I start coloring in all the blacks. In order to start coloring in your project on Adobe Illustrator, it works a little bit different. There are multiple ways you can color in, uh, color in a design. You could either add, uh, add the colors in by creating colors and putting them behind your project, but this is a little easier method so you can go ahead and just color them in with a paint bucket. So on your left side toolbar, look for something called the Live Paint Bucket Tool. So it should be a paint bucket right here on the left side. If you do not see this paint bucket, what I want you to do is go down to those three dots on the bottom of the left side toolbar, click that, and then a, tool, uh, a toolbar will open that says All Tools. And what I want you to do is look in there until you see the Live Paint Bucket Tool. It may take you a while, but it's in there. Click on that Live Paint Bucket Tool, and uh, if you'll know that you've done this step correctly, is when you hover your mouse over the project, you should th see the colors changing like that. You see how that's being highlighted now? That means you correctly made your project to where you can live paint it. So what we're going to do now is let's paint in all the blacks. So you already know usually the black parts are always like, uh, you know, the inside of mouths, the dots in the eyes. You know, let's color in that mole and things of that nature. I don't think there's a lot of black on them. So uh, what we're going to do now 
is we're going to go ahead and uh, bring that layer back to normal. So let's double click on the layer one and then click on template and press OK. That's going to bring that template back to normal, right? So let's drag this template away from that from our line work and I'm going to resize. I'm going to make it smaller. Let's resize that and make that smaller. Now, what we want to do now, because like I said, I want to keep these two ladies uh, looking exactly like the original. So in order to keep those original colors, like what they did in the original animation cell, what I want you to do is click on what is called the um, the eyedropper tool. So look on your left side toolbar. It is the six button down on the right side of the left side toolbar. It looks like a squirt bottle. So what I want you to do is just click on that. Boom. It, like I said before, if you do not see this, go to the very bottom of your screen, click on edit toolbar and you can find it there. Now, what, now what we want to do is click on the skin with the eyedropper tool. Boom. We're going to click on her skin. It's going to and when you click on the skin, it, that's how you select the color to be painted in. So let's go ahead and paint in her skin. We're going to do the big girl first. Let's color her in. And I think her eyes, nah, she got like eyeshadow and stuff. So let's not do that. Let's get all the skin out the way. You, what you want to be doing is zooming all the way in. Zooming all the way in. Make sure there's no holes in your project. Zoom all the way in and make sure you properly color these things. Now, if at any point of watching this video to my people who are not watching this video live, if you watching this playback, if you miss any of these steps, make sure you just rewind back to whichever part, just so you don't get lost. Okay, let's cut her in her hands. And I believe that's it. I think that's some skin down there too. Let's get that and that. Okay. Now that's all of her skin. Now we just gonna keep doing the same thing. Let's click our eyedropper tool. Let's click on our lips because her lips are red. Let's color that in just like that. This part is usually pretty easy. All you doing is just coloring stuff in. It's very simple. If you ever use paint, I know they have a paint program called on windows. If you use paint before you already familiar with the way that I'm coloring this in right now. Eyedropper her eyes. She have blue eyes. That's kind of weird for black people. We, uh, most of us uh, within our culture, we don't have blue eyes. But there are there is Africans who do have blue eyes. Don't get it twisted. I've seen Africans. I can't remember uh, what do you what you call that per se, but there are dark skinned African people who do have blue eyes. I think this woman probably got on some contacts or something. But there are black people with blue eyes, just to be clear, and green eyes. And probably damn near every color. Let's get her wig because this is it's very rare to see black people with blonde hair, but they do exist. <laughs> uh, you don't really see dark skin black people with blonde hair like that, but um, we do have lighter skin people who have uh, a blonde hair. OK, let's get um, her teeth and the inside of her eyes is just white. make that like an off-white with a little bit of pink in it just to get that natural feel to it boom boom let's get that little purple right there might have missed the spot right there boom okay now um let's get her top this is a very weird top is that green i don't know what this weird color is i'm just gonna eye drop it and color that in Okay, I see a little bit of blonde in her hair. Make sure you zoom in, get all those holes. Let's get that top, click that with the eyedropper tool. It's like a, a very weird blue. Remember in the 90s, they used to have some very weird colors. Almost all characters and cartoons, they would have very strange colors. And the outfits would be colored in a very strange way. But that was the generation at that time. At the, at the time in the 90s, a lot of the colors were like off color, like off white. You would see people with, with Adidas with that were off white and whatever. 
um, you would see like uh, people with colorful, different colors of purple and orange and things of that nature. And this was normal everyday stuff. I feel like nowadays most outfits are pretty bland. You don't see, you know, these, uh, you know, super colors on clothing nowadays. This is like a Wingstop cup. Or am I overthinking this? It's like a Wingstop cup. Zoom in on that. We just zooming in, clicking with the eyedropper tool and just grabbing those colors. We want her to be very close to the original. Just color that in, boom, boom. Look at that, make sure there's no hole, zoom all the way in. I see one right there. Boom, I see another one right there too. Let's color that in, boom. Okay, so I think we got the big girl done. No, let me color her teeth white. Boom. Okay, we have her done. Now let's get this high yellow girl. I think they intended to make her like a little bit more light skin. But as I'm using the eyedropper, she looks a little bit darker than that. So I'm, I'll say brown skin. Let's get all of her skin done. Let's get that skin. Let me make sure I'm not missing no skin. Okay, she has some down there. Is that some too? Nope. That's not her skin down there? That look like that should be her skin down there. No, I guess that ain't. Okay, cool. Somebody writing me. Okay. I'm going to respond right quick. That's my apologies, y'all. I usually don't write, respond, or uh, talk to people when I'm on live stream. But if it's an emergency, I'll stop and give it some attention. Her eyes are green. Now you will see light-skinned black people with green eyes. So this wouldn't be too disrespectful. Uh, I think they want them to have more of a, um, like more of a thottish looking look. So I think that's the main reason why they made it look like they got contacts and wigs and all that extra mess on them. You know, back in the old days, there was no such thing as a thought. <laughs> so if you was to see a woman looking like this back then, they had a whole different saying for what that was. I'm not going to say that on the Internet, man, you know what I mean? Okay, let's color that in. Boom. that nice and colored in boom so now the, the excuse me y'all the uh, further i'm getting the more it's starting to look like the original we're getting close as you can see i'm using the original colors because i want this to look very close to the original i want you to be able to look at this and tell exactly what this is and the intention that i went with it if you just now checking into this video this is the two women uh, from the movie Bebe's Kids. If you've seen the movie Bebe's Kids, this was a very popular um, uh, movie in the uh, in the nineties. I seen it when I was a little kid. I seen it on a v VHS. I seen it on a VHS when I was a kid, and I remember when I was watching it, it was real blurry. But I remember watching it, being intrigued, like, what the hell is this? And these tops they wear look so dirty. Let me get down there. Let 
Let's color her skin in a little bit better. Boom. Give me one second, y'all. Let me respond to these messages. Um, see, this is my thing. It's like... I'm not even going to say nothing. I know if I say something, this chick going to be mad at me. So I'm not even going to say nothing. I'm not even going to entertain that. Okay. So I think we done. I don't see nothing else that we need to color in. No, nah, I think we done. So um, usually what I do in these projects, because I know you're probably watching them be like, damn, this nigga Jaden knocked this out too quick. Okay, so a lot of times when I work on these projects, of course, I usually do the highlights and shadows. On this project, I'm not going to do the highlights and shadows because, I, like I said, I want this this to look a lot like the original. And so uh, all I pretty much did was just clean up everything with the line work. Made sure the line work was as clean as possible. Uh, I made sure I added in all of the original colors. And, oh, as you can see, I, I actually did forget something. I didn't color in these whites. And I'm going to show you all something real quick, just in case you end up like me and you have any holes in your project and you forget to color in these whites. I'm going to show you something to actually help you out just in case. So this is what I usually do. I start a new layer, start a new layer. Make sure this layer is under your layer that you're drawing on. Right. So go to your color box, your, uh, your closed box right here. Double click that and change it to a color that you know you're not using. I always choose like a neon green because I know no project that I ever do is ever going to be neon green. And what I do is right click on the shape tool right under the pen tool and I drag out a real big uh, uh, rectangle right under it. And once I have that rectangle under it, I zoom in and see if this project has any holes. You want to make sure you zoom in very close to each part of your canvas. You want to make sure and check and see if it's anything you didn't color in. Now, as you can see, I was pretty much on point. I colored in everything. So that's just a something you can do just in case um, once you finish in your project and you want to make sure you covered everything. So uh, that's it, y'all. So I appreciate everybody for um, checking out this video. I appreciate everybody uh, who've been coming in and out on um on Trovo, shout out to, I don't know if I can uh, pronounce this. That says, a pass near Narika. Well, I'm just going to spell it out. Shout out to A-P-A-S-N-I-Y-R-Y-K-A. -Y -Y shout out to you <laughs> and all the new people coming in and out. Uh, I can't see all these names. It's too many. Um, yo, shout out to everybody on Twitch who came in and out and showed love. Shout out to everybody on YouTube. Shout out to... Shout out to everybody on Behance who's still watching. I appreciate you, uh, but uh, I, I got to go. All my people on Behance, I appreciate y'all for watching this entire time. Uh, shout out to all my people on uh, on Facebook who came in and out showing that love. Like I always tell you, you ain't got to come in and watch the entire time. I just appreciate you coming in and checking in, hitting that like button and sharing and showing me some love. So uh, this is it for this project. If you have any demands or any questions on anything that you see me do, uh, all you have to do is contact me within these different platforms. All you have to do is search me at J Damage, J-A-Y-D-A-M-A-G-E. Or um, what you can do is you can just inbox me on any of these platforms or dm me on instagram my instagram is j damage designs d-e-s-i-g-n-s -E -S and um let me what else let me see Am I, let me make sure i'm not missing nothing um oh yeah yeah and if you do want me to work with you one on one that is going to cost you uh i'm i promise you it probably won't be a lot unless you need me for a very long time but uh yeah I just appreciate y'all, man. I appreciate y'all for coming in and watching this entire time, especially my people on Behance. My people on Behance always come in and watch the entire time. So I really appreciate that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here, y'all. I will see y'all tomorrow at around 7 p.m. I'm not going to say exactly at 7 p.m. because I might be doing something. But hopefully my stream labs will be back and I'll have my music and all my features back. So I appreciate y'all.